Hi everybody, welcome to another short video in our series looking at the use of indifference curves to illustrate some economic concepts. In this session, we're going to take a quick look at how we can show cross price elasticity of demand using indifference curves. Cross price elasticity is the responsiveness of demand for, let's say, product X when there's a change in the price of a related product Y or Z. And typically we make a distinction between substitutes and complements. In this video, we'll focus on two substitute products. Well, many people, of course, mix their products at breakfast. You can make a case for saying that fruit and salad and nuts and cereal and yogurt are actually complementary goods. But I'm going to make a simplifying assumption in this uh, simple example that uh, yogurt and cereals as breakfast products are counted as substitutes. If you don't agree with me, uh, please uh, please stay with stay with this for the next couple of minutes. So here's, a, here's a, an initial scenario. We've got the quantity of yoghurt consumed on the y-axis and the quantity of cereal bought on the x-axis. We start with an initial equilibrium, which is the point of tangency between budget line BL1 and the highest attainable indifference curve IC1. At that equilibrium, the consumer chooses to purchase a C amount of yoghurt and A amount of cereal. Now let's make a change to the diagram. I have reduced the price of cereal. In fact, I've pretty much halved it. You can see now that the consumption possibility for cereal has doubled for a given income. <clears throat> We've kept the price of yogurt the same, so income and the price of yogurt remain constant. All other factors remain constant. We've just reduced the price of cereal. And this causes a pivotal outward shift of the budget line. Now, what this allows the consumer to do is to move on to a higher indifference curve. Uh, remember that indifference curves can't intersect, but the indifference curve that a consumer could possibly reach now would be, let's call it IC2. And there's a new point of tangency between that curve and budget line BL2. As a result, the consumer can change and probably will change their choices in the market. They'll consume D amount of yogurt, and B amount of cereal. So where does cross price elasticity of demand come into this? Well, the fall in the price of cereal has caused consumers to buy more cereal. There's been an expansion of demand, but at the same time, they've reallocated their budget and they're buying less yogurt. So in that sense, there's been a substitution effect away from yogurt towards cereal, which is now relatively cheaper. Consumers are buying more cereal, buying less yogurt. There's a substitution effect at work. And of course, this is cross price elasticity of demand. In this example, a significant, a large fall in the price of cereal has only caused a small fall in the demand for yogurt. We've gone down from C to D. So this suggests that the, the cross price elasticity is positive. Uh, the price of cereal goes down, the demand for yogurt goes down. So the coefficient will be positive, but the coefficient of cross price elasticity will be low. For example, a 50% fall in the price of cereal might only cause, let's say, a 10% fall, a 10 fall in the demand for yogurt, giving a, a, a coefficient of cross elasticity of, of just plus 0.2. So in this example, uh, this suggests that the two products are weak substitutes and that's probably realistic. People have uh, quite strong default bias when it comes to their choice of, of breakfast foods. If the price of cereal falls a lot, it's, it's unlikely that the yogurt lovers are going to seriously give up their, their breakfast habits just because the, the cereals are, more, are cheaper. OK, so hopefully that uh, shows you how you can use indifference curves to show cross price elasticity of demand for two substitute products. Thank you.